Glasgow Science Centre is on a mission to improve the biodiversity of our garden. We have planted trees and flowers and turned our moat into a reed bed. We have also installed new floating wetlands behind the canting basin behind the IMAX to further improve our biodiversity. Biodiversity is all different types of plants and animals that you can find in a particular area. To investigate the biodiversity of the reed beds in our moat, we're going to go pond dipping. Let's see what kind of creatures we're living in and around the water. Let's go! To go pond dipping, you need a few pieces of equipment. Use a net of any size. I'm going to use this one today. Some spoons to get a closer look at your creatures. And a tray to keep your creatures nice and safe and some water. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my tray, take some water from the pond, and this means we have somewhere nice and safe to keep our creatures to have a closer look at them. Next, I'm going to take my net and I'm going to make sure I'm kneeling nice and steady beside the pond. This is going to give you a steady base and stop you from falling in. Next, you take your net and gently swoosh in a figure of eight motion around the top third of the water. Don't be afraid to get in there and grab some more of the creatures. And just remember to not overextend into the water as you may lose your balance and fall in. Afterwards, you can take your net tip it out into your tray and see what creatures you have found. So we found lots of stuff, including a lot of leaf litter. To get a closer look at what creatures you've found, it's perfectly fine to take some of that leaf litter out and that gives you a better idea of what you found, makes it much easier to find things. Now we're going to go back to the lab and see what creatures we found in our moat. Here we are in the lab and we're now joined by Dr Ed Curley from the University of Glasgow. How are you doing, Ed? Not too bad. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. It's been so much fun already today and we've caught lots of stuff. But before we get into the nitty gritty of what we've caught, it'd just be great if you could tell us what you do at the University of Glasgow. Well, I'm a lecturer and a researcher. So in terms of what I'm interested in, I'm largely interested in aquatic ecology, which is basically just looking at animals that live in rivers, lakes, ponds, and their interactions with the rest of the environment. Nice, so did you always have an interest in biodiversity and invertebrates? Yes, <laughs> I was a bit of a weirdo as a child and I loved being out in the wild, digging around in the mud and seeing what was living there and just looking at it basically. So yeah, absolutely. Cool, so we have lots of really interesting creatures in our tray here today and it'd be great if you could help us identify them now. So how about we start with these really big ones in the middle here, it looks like a big snail. Um, and that is because it is a big snail. <laughs> a big snail. So, just like the snails you find on land, there are snails that live in the water, and these are termed grazers. So they will feed off the algae on the rocks that we find in our ponds, or in our rivers, in our lakes. Awesome, I'm glad I managed to identify that correctly <laughs> off the top. Um, and great, let's move on to another one. Oh, we've got one over here, that looks like a fish to me, and it looks like something's on the fish as well. Okay, so we've got two things to look at here, as you've noted. So what we have here is a stickleback, and you're, you're right, it is a small fish essentially. On it, what we can actually see is a leech. Unfortunately for the stickleback, this leech is taking a little bit of its blood. And as we can see over time, that leech will get a little bit bigger. This looks like a big insect type thing over here. Could you describe to us what this is, please? Ah, so these are very lovely. These are called water boatmen. And the reason they are called water boatmen is because two of their arms or appendages have been turned or elongated into what look like oars. And that's pretty much how they function. They function as large oars that allow them to row through the water. So we've had a little bit of a chat about our vertebrates, the sticklebacks. Could you tell us anything interesting about the invertebrates we have here? Ah, oh, well, so if you think about like a food chain, mm -hmm. the invertebrates are like the lowest level of our food chain. Okay. So what they do is they can process a lot of like the leaf, like mm -hmm. leaf matter and also like algae within our system and they make it readily available within that system and change the actual ecology of a river or a lake or a pond. So thinking about the importance of these creatures, could you tell us why the floating wetlands at Glasgow Science Centre is going to be so important for our local area? So you will find some of these insects knocking about our floating wetlands. Um, obviously you'll need to be a bit closer than most people can get to. Yeah. But for those on the side, you will be able to see some birds for sure. Mm -hmm. You will also perhaps see some fish knocking about the floating wetlands as well. Um, so there's many benefits across different animals. Nice, that's really interesting to hear. And thank you so much for coming along and helping us out with us today oh, and helping us so find out more about all the wonderful creatures we found. Cheers, thanks for having me. Now we've finished looking at all the amazing invertebrates we found today, it's time to return them home to the pond. So I'm going to kneel down by the pond and gently pour them back home. Just remember to wash your equipment, your nets, your trays with warm water if you're using them between different pots. 
Thanks for joining us today. Next time you visit Glasgow Science Centre, be sure to have a look around our outdoor space, see what plants and animals you can find. Also, be sure to check out the new floating wetlands in the Canting Basin behind the IMAX. Use your binoculars to see what birds, fish or invertebrates you might be able to find there. Thanks again and bye bye.